Hello, this is Paul the Oka Knight, coming back to you once again to give you an overview of Flashpoint South China Sea, a game published by GMT Games and designed by Harold Buchanan. Flashpoint South China Sea is a game heavily influenced by Twilight Struggle, and anyone who is familiar with Twilight Struggle will instantly recognize what this game is about. It is both a one-player and a two-player game. Each has its own set of rules, with the two-player rules actually being fairly short, about, I'd say, five, six pages of real rules. And the uh, solitaire game where you can play either side, can somewhat longer, probably at about 15. And as we see on the reverse of the box, we can see the map is going to feature various areas where both sides are going to contend for control, as well as the various cards, which would look somewhat familiar to anyone who's played Twilight Struggle, uh, with both action points or actions, as far as other things that they can do that I'll outline in a few minutes. The game has a top solitaire rating because it does have purpose-specific solitaire rules incorporated into the game and is at the low complexity and frankly the two-player game with a whopping five pages of rules thereabouts I'd say it might even be lower than a three. You know, put that at a two as far as complexity. This is not an overly complex game by any stretch. You don't have to dig too far into the game before you understand that this is not a conventional war game. We're not dealing with military units of the normal sort, but instead we are dealing with two, two factions that are vying for geopolitical control of the region, just short of actual kinetic conflict. Based on the back of the box, this should be a game that you and a buddy, or just by yourself, should be able to play multiple times in an evening, whereas it says playing time is 30 to 60 minutes. So that's not all that long. Opening the box, we first we see the two-player rules, followed by oops, followed by the uh, the solo rules, and we can see the 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 entire rules booklet for the two-player rules is eleven pages, at least by the heading headings they have marked. And it's really less than that because there's a lot of other stuff for setup and so forth in there. Uh, and the solo rules are 19 pages, according to what they say here. Before getting into the rulebooks themselves, I took a look at the playbook. And right at the beginning of the designer's notes, it talks about that, well, this game really is not Twilight Struggle Light, despite the fact that it's got these cards that have events and action points, and we have scoring parts and cards, and we have little, little control markers that we put in the various regions on the game board. This is not Twilight Struggle. The notes go on to point out that this is not a conventional war game. We are not dealing with military units. Instead, we are dealing with influence. Two sides vying for influence over the region without resorting to a hot war. The last part, they talk about bidding for the advantage. They're basically talking about bidding victory points to see who gets to be Chinese. In, in another point in the manual, they mentioned that the Chinese are kind of favored in this game. And so to, so to make that work, they have each side bid victory points for the honor of being a Chinese communist. And the game features a variety of player eight cards. Here we see the uh, sequence of play. We see the ops cost. You can get operation points off of your cards and use those to do stuff. And this is letting you know what that stuff is. That is going to be dependent on the level of tension between the two sides. So uh, there are certain things in the game that can escalate tensions between the United States and China. And no doubt it gets har uh, harder to do things as tensions ratchet up and going up to impossible. And there's solo aids as well. This is for the, the U.S. opponent being bot controlled. And here is solo play for the China bot. The game map should look familiar to anybody who has played Twilight Struggle. It's basically showing regions and where you can put your various control markers. Here they divide it into both economic and diplomatic. That's all fine. But it is the same idea. The deck consists of seven scoring cards, eight cards designed for solo play only, and 48 event cards with their operations point value, as well as an event, as well as a picture of your favorite Asian communist leader. I don't know about you, but I've always wanted to have a picture of the general secretary of the Communist Party of Vietnam. I'm going to have to cut and paste and put this one up on my wall someplace. The beautifully mounted, satin-finished, hard-mounted game map 
shows the various areas that are under contention, the different countries as well as areas of significance that both sides vie for control over during the course of their game. The game is played over the course of three so-called campaigns where players, after having been dealt their cards, play their cards in a manner that should be quite familiar to anyone who has dealt with Twilight Struggle. The tension between the Chinese Communists and the American side is kept tracked on the tension track, of course. As tension escalates, it becomes harder to do certain actions. Each side also has a set of available and reserved units that can come into play and placed on the map when their cards allow them to do so. And each side keeps track of their score on the victory point track, which will yield a score at the end of the game or possibly lead to a sudden death victory. And of course, my favorite part of the map is the warning to all aircraft against flying over Chinese-controlled islands, lest they be fired on without warning. After it has been determined who has the honor of being a Chinese communist, both players select six cards, and play begins by alternating, putting down one card at a time for each side, and selecting the options that are available for each of the cards that you play. When placing a card, players may place one influence cube in economic or diplomatic zones on the board, Move one cube from the reserve to available. Place one freedom of navigation operations FNOP and increase tension. That sounds exciting. Uh, place one Chinese reclamation and increase tension. Or place one cube in the political warfare space. And last but not least, resolve the political warfare. And also, scoring cards may be picked, may be played out of your player hand, uh, forcing scoring for that particular uh, for that particular card. Play proceeds until all six cards are exhausted from both players' hands, whereupon the board is reset for the next campaign in the conflict. So at this point, without actually having played the game, clearly this is a derivative of the Twilight Struggle system and therefore just about anybody who likes that system will probably like this game too. The designer's notes talked about how they tried to reduce the effect of memorizing the cards has on the game. Not exactly sure how they do that yet, but frankly that, that didn't bother me about Twilight Struggle because hey, if you are more skilled at the game, then you deserve to have a leg up winning as far as I'm concerned. But they thought it was an issue and they did things to try to, to mediate that effect. To me, it seems like the company is attempting to figure out how they can get more money out of the system, basically, by coming out with products that connect to the original. Uh, frankly, they've cranked out coin games to death, to the point where I'm not all that interested in any more coin games because I've got enough of them, as good as they are. Whereas they hadn't really done that yet with Twilight Struggle, and now they're starting to do that. So what they're saying is the first game of the Flashpoint series. We can probably look forward to more of these coming. I don't think this is a particularly bad thing. I enjoy Twilight Struggle. Anyone who enjoyed Twilight Struggle would probably enjoy this game too. It's not been an overdone topic as of yet. So, that's my brief overview of the game. If you have not subscribed yet, please consider going ahead and hitting the subscribe button so that you can join our gaming community and keep up to speed with what we're doing here. But for now, this is Paul, the Oka Knight, wishing you all a pleasant evening.